Hey everyone and welcome to another home theatre update. So in this video we're going to be going over the replacement monolith sub and some of the other little improvements within the room that I was working on in previous videos. I think we've got to the stage where this room is pretty much done for now. Uh, the next major project is going to be the media console uh, behind the camera. Uh, the one that the projector is actually sitting on, but that is uh, a bigger project because I need to actually decide what I'm doing with the dimensions uh, and whether I choose to keep it as long as the one that I've got existing or whether I make it smaller in order to get a second sub somewhere down the line as part of the front sound stage essentially. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, I'll take the camera off the tripod now and we'll take a look at some of the, the things that have actually changed. Okay, so the first major change is the fact that the replacement monolith 15 inch V2 subwoofer has arrived. Um, I'm not sure how well this will come across, but you might be able to just see a slight hint of a, a red sort of glow behind the subwoofer. That is the standby light, so it's no longer doing the thing where it's flashing. Uh, so the subwoofer, um, I've not tested it that much. It's only been with TV series that we've been watching, so probably about an hour to an hour and a half every single day, but it's working flawlessly. Uh, as some have mentioned in the comments, obviously it seems to be a common sort of issue that they're having. Something that I did kind of remember was the fact that obviously a lot of the people that purchased these subwoofers they would have done it during lockdown period and that whole period obviously there was the big major chip shortage and electronic parts shortage in general so the fact that they actually ship out replacement subwoofers may have something to do with the fact that they can't get the replacement components uh, in order to just replace the amp and one of the sort of communications that i did have with monoprice from a different department so and i had one person that was dealing with the entire return and somebody else did actually get in contact with me when I actually reported the issue and they did report that the part number for the amp itself uh, has at least a six month waiting period so I think the fact that they replace these subwoofers obviously none of this the actual subwoofers themselves have an issue it is the amps that are failing uh, and it seems to be probably something quite simple but obviously with me being in the UK with a monoprice no longer selling directly in the eu uh, unless you go through like a third party uh, supplier like american audio company the sponsor of the channel then they don't really have a way of doing direct repairs and obviously that's probably the main reason why they've chosen um to to go down this route of just replacing the actual subwoofer that way they know that everything is working and they don't have to worry about taking the subwoofer repairing it, sending it back, and potentially it not having resolved the initial issue. So for me personally, I think it's a good thing, the fact that they just simply replaced the whole product. It makes it a lot simpler. Yeah, I did have to wait a bit longer. That's mainly due to Brexit and customs and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, it's here, it's working fine. We'll obviously wait and see how long it's working for. Um, but yeah, that's that's the situation with the subwoofer. So in terms of audio on the whole setup, everything is back to normal and I will need to obviously rerun Odyssey because not only is this a different subwoofer, obviously I've moved it slightly, I've got settings set slightly differently as well, but generally what I tend to do is run Odyssey on THX mode. So on the back of the subwoofer, you do have a knob that you can change from THX, which is automatic, uh, all the way through manually up to, I believe it's plus 12 decibels. So the general advice when setting up these kind of subwoofers is either run it in THX mode and then you've got headroom to switch it into manual mode or run it at zero decibels on the sub and then you've got 12 potentially decibels to play with. Uh, projector, uh, as mentioned in the previous video, I've not had any issues with the projector. So yeah, that's all running fine. Speakers have been flawless. Um, I will have a separate review coming up on those. Uh, the components, extra components, so obviously I'm running the Zidu player. I am currently running a beta version for that. The previous genu genuine release, uh, for some reason, all of, all of the genuine releases that I actually run for the Zidu, they always have the same issue whereby they actually trip out the trailers. So the trailers stop working for some reason. I'm not sure why it does it, uh, but it's done it probably twice or three times now. Whenever I go from a beta software or firmware onto the genuine one, then it always seems to trip out. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, that could be resolved quite easily just by switching back to the beta version. So I'm probably going to leave it on the beta version until I know for a fact that 
the trailers is fixed. Uh, the remotes, once again, so I did make a small change. So obviously I mentioned in the previous video that I was using the diamond version of the uh, Best Joy remotes. Now the, the big drawback of that is this is quite heavy. So when you actually drop the remote onto here on the dock, that actually stays put quite well. The problem with this one was it was quite flimsy. So I have actually just stuck this down with a bit of double, uh, some Velcro. So if need be, I can take it off, but it's, it's enough now to where I can drop the remote in and it stays put. Uh, the Marantz, obviously I mentioned uh, the one niggle I'm having with that. Apple TV, I am running the beta software for tvOS 17. So if you've got any questions on that, obviously drop it in the comments. Uh, the screen, as I mentioned in the previous video, I've not had any issues with sagging or anything like that, mainly because I've not actually been uh, either using compressed air or c wiping over it or anything um, in order to clean it. So this room is gen generally kept quite clean and it's only dust that settles that I end up having to basically clean out. Now one of the things that was missing in the previous video that is now here as you can see is well if I can try and get it to focus in because obviously it's quite dark in here. Okay so as you can now see hopefully uh, the radiator has now been painted black and I have also got matching um, sort of coverings for the actual piping as well just to have it blend in a bit better. Um, the finish isn't the best. I was rushing a little. It's mainly on this sort of top cover just there, just on that corner. Uh, but luckily the parts that are actually quite thin are the ones that you can just remove. Any sort of patchiness you're seeing on this is actually just dust from when I actually refitted it and the way that the light actually catches it. Uh, the main idea with this was obviously it kind of stood out and uh, was bit of a sore thumb in terms of the, the rest of the room uh, whereas now as you can see it blends in perfectly well. Seating wise obviously I mentioned that in the previous video that the rear seats have been lifted and I also rotated the LEDs so they now shine down rather than shining out. Uh, since the last video obviously as you can see I have centered them slightly, I haven't gone fully centered and they also look offset from this row of seats but that's more to do with the fact that this row of seats isn't perfectly perfectly centered either because uh, my wife who sits in this seat uh, wasn't really very happy about being as far out so as far as this seat is concerned I am just slightly off center as far as the main main seating position um, hence why it makes that one look further out, out of sort of center whereas it's not actually that much um, just moving that across has given me a new sort of home for where the vacuum actually lives so the vacuum cleaner now can stay back there. It's out of the way, but it's, it's available should I need it in order to, to just vacuum this room. I do keep that separate vacuum for cleaning in this room. And then there's, I've got a separate one for the rest of the house, just because obviously this is new copy and I want to keep it uh, as uncontaminated as possible. As you can see with the way that the lights are now angled, extend this seat out, it's not dependent on the seats coming out in order to affect the actual glow of the LEDs anymore. So now they literally just shine straight down, as you can see there. And the final sort of big change is the fact that I have now reversed the door and that is what's enabled me to actually move these seats further to the edge. Uh, reversing the door, I haven't patched in all of these sort of uh, bits where the hinges were and everything so as you can see they they're still there and the the reason for that is I'm all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint over uh, where the hinges used to be and then I'm going to leave them there uh, in case we ever want to reverse the room back to how it used to be so it doesn't make sense for me to completely patch everything in and leave it like this permanently because obviously if, if I do ever reverse the room everything else is reversible um, and patching those in would not make any sense because somewhere down the line somebody would need to reattach the door to open inwards and at that stage you, you're giving them a problem because they may end up going into something that's not as solid as you'd like whereas this way if I just col uh, paint those pa patches then uh, hopefully everything should, should be good for them to reverse it back should the need arise. Um, I'm predicting this room's going to stay like this for quite a while but obviously you don't, you don't know what's going to happen further down the line. Uh, the final thing which still needs a little bit of a patch job, but so basically the two holes that I used to have for when 
the initial Atmos speaker was actually drilled in order to try and find out where the beams were. There were two actual holes there, whereas now they've been filled in. Uh, we were waiting for the filler to dry and basically it just needs a quick touch up. And then the final thing was this speaker down here. There's also a little red mark there as well. So once again, that just needs filling in. Apart from that, the rest of the room uh, is pretty much done now. And this is how it's gonna end up staying uh, for the most part. Now it's just gonna be a case of actually making use of it and enjoying it. Obviously there are gonna be quite a few uh, Marvel series as well as some, uh, some other series coming up, um, Star Wars ones coming up. So that's generally where we tend to make most use of these, but then any movies that we don't want to watch on cinemas, uh, we just wait for the uh, public release and then we'll watch it. Uh, also, obviously, any of the streaming content as well, because a lot of the Netflix, Apple TV Plus and other content out there doesn't go to cinemas. So that's basically why this room was set up and created in the way that it has been, just to give us the best possible experience when watching content um, that isn't available on the big screen, essentially. Um, I did go to the cinemas yesterday. Uh, I went to watch Transformers, Rise of the Beasts, and was not very impressed, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the experience wasn't the best. The movie itself was probably, as I mentioned on Twitter, five out of 10. Uh, it wasn't the best, um, but the, the experience of the actual screen itself. So what happens with, uh, I watched that showcase in Derby, and I watched, all the, all the blockbusters I generally tend to watch on their X plus screen, which is basically like the equivalent of IMAX. Now, what they tend to do is because this is a widescreen sc uh, screen, uh, it's a curved screen and it's also wall to wall, whilst the trailers and everything are running, they'll literally leave it in 16 by nine aspect ratio. So all of the trailers and everything play in that aspect ratio. And then just as the movie starts, they stretch the screen out to fill the, the entire screen. Um, the problem, is that when they have actually stretched it out, right before the movie starts, there's some promos and warnings about uh, copyright and all the rest of it. And even from that point, I could see that the the image wasn't sharp. So for whatever reason, it's missed focus. Um, I assumed that maybe a minute, two minutes into the movie, this would get corrected, but it didn't. So all the way through the movie, the entire movie was extremely, extremely soft. Now, I don't know whether this is an intentional choice. It might be one of those things where directors have actually chosen to make the movie softer because a lot of people have complained about Transformers in the past, the fact that because these are purely sort of CGI characters and because of the amount of motion, and especially because this was a 3D movie, people have complained in the past that basically they, they come out of the movie with a headache. So I don't know whether they've softened the image intentionally just to try and uh, make it a bit bit more easy on the eye but the sort of takeaway I had was firstly it was too dark so the image was way too dark and that really hit home when I came back home um, and I watched a episode on the screen behind me and as soon as I turned the projector on I was like whoa that's so much brighter now granted I'm sat way closer and it's not in 3d but even still that that difference was immediately apparent. The second one was obviously the, the sharpness of the image itself, because obviously being a brand new movie, you would expect that it's being broadcast in 4K, so there's no reason for it to be soft unless one of two things, either the, uh, the director's chosen to go down that route or basically they've missed focus. And it was like that for the entire movie as well. Uh, occasional, um, there was a lot of depth of field in that particular movie, so, there were scenes where just because of where the focus was, you were getting elements of the screen that were still in focus and they, they looked sharp, but it was few and far between. And generally th the whole movie was quite soft. So like I said on, on Twitter, I'll wait for the actual public release and then I'll download it and I'll watch it um, to see what it's actually like, uh, whether it was intentional, whether it was meant to be like that, uh, or whether that's, somewhere where they've, they've messed up and basically ruined the entire movie for me. Um, it is one of those things where I generally tend to notice these kind of things and it will stick with me for the rest of the movie. Similarly to if you have like a, a speck of dust on the screen or something like that. So yeah, not the, not the best experience. And generally the more I go to cinemas, the more I find that I'm actually preferring this sort of setup at home instead, something where it's a bit more personal uh, you don't have the constraints of their timings, um, not being able to pause the movie um, to get snacks and things like that. So, yeah, 
Um, in the long run, I think this, this will pay for itself in terms of the enjoyment that we get out of the room. Obviously, it has been quite a big outlay, and in terms of workload, um, it's been quite a lot of work that's gone into it. It has been fun. I have enjoyed doing all the DIY in, in this room. Um, and obviously it's not fully complete yet, but yeah, for anybody out there that's having thoughts on this kind of thing, it will take time. I was actually thinking about this uh, the other day that th it's probably taken the best part of a year to get to this stage now from the original setup where it was a white, white room, white walls, white ceiling, and it was just a wall mounted TV. So it's, it's been quite a journey since that point. And yeah, it's, it's been gradually going from the point where anybody can do it up to this, the point where I would say, yeah, if you've got some, somebody who knows what they're doing in terms of the atmospheres in particular, um, that, that helps, but it's not something that you can't achieve yourself. Um, everything else has been done by me. So I'm, I'm not, I don't do this industry um, professionally. So obviously if I can do it, anybody out there can do it. I do no tools and I've worked with my hands for pretty much most of my life. So I am quite handy when it comes to different tasks and different projects, but there was a lot of what's gone into this, this particular room that has been um, new experiences for me. And that's something that I think if, if you can experience it, if, if it's something that you are planning to do, then you can save a lot of money by doing certain things yourself. And also it gives you that flexibility where if you choose to further down the line, because you've initially done it, you can then go in and redo it or make changes. Whereas if you get it just done for you professionally, then yeah, they might they might get it way better, but it'll cost you more, or they might get it and how you initially thought you wanted it, as I did, and then you find further down the line that yeah, you need to make changes because it doesn't suit the room um, as best as it can. So you make certain changes based on the room um, in order to get more out of it or just to make small tweaks. That's today's sort of update. Uh, this is where we're at in terms of the whole setup. Uh, pretty pleased with where it is right now. There will be changes in the future, no doubt. Um, probably the projector is one of the things that I would like to try out a few different projectors as well because the one thing that still does hit home is the black levels, but that's the same with any ultra short throw that's using DLP. Um, some of the projectors out there are starting to use different technologies. Um, Epson, probably the, the main one with their LC, LCD technology rather than the, the standard DLP off, off the shelf that everybody else tends to use. Um, but yeah, that's, that's something that Somewhere down the line, maybe um, I might get some review samples or some review units uh, from other manufacturers that want me to, to actually compare theirs. So obviously, if there are any out there watching, then you know what to do, get, get in contact. Uh, but yeah, the, the room is pretty much um, set up in, in a way where I can get six people comfortably, at least, if not probably seven on that, that back row. If you've got kids, you could probably quite easily squeeze four on that back row. Um, and we can all watch and have a really good experience in terms of the screen, the audio, and obviously you're getting that tactile base um, from the actual sub as well. So yeah, I will have more videos coming and I will now, now that I've done quite a lot of the updates, I'll have some dedicated videos coming. I've been saying it for quite a while, but I will have some videos coming on the seating. Uh, I will also have some uh, a video coming on the speakers themselves as well as the remotes. So that's three videos that I need to actually get around to doing. It's just come, coming down to time and running out of time to actually get stuff done, especially the filming when kids are home and you just got noise in the background. So um, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I really appreciate if you can share this video and also give it a thumbs up. Until the next one, thanks very much for watching.